Welcome to the podcast Above the Clouds. In this podcast, we are looking at Bhagavatam texts with the sole intention to extract some type of lesson that we can apply throughout the week. Today we have chosen a verse from the fifth canto, chapter 5, text 1. Nayam deho deha vajam niloke kashtan kaman arhati vidpujam ye, etc. Lord Rishadev here tells his sons, My dear boys, of all the living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard day and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for dogs and hogs that eat stool. One should engage in penance and austerity to attain the divine position of devotional service. By such activity, One's heart is purified, and when one attains this position, he attains eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever. Wonderful. Uh, these texts, which Rishabdev will speak from now on, are intended to establish Bhakti Yoga and therefore right in the beginning in his first mm, text of all his further instructions he criticizes uh, material enjoyment uh, because it cannot bring us to the goal of human life. Therefore he makes this comparison. He says, in the human form of life, we should not do the activities which animals can do, most probably even better. There's a special prior prerogative or gift, and it should be wisely used. This special gift given to us as humans is the gift of self-reflection. We can reflect about ourselves and our situation in life. We are not forced to only follow the impulses of the senses and of the surrounding environment. We can ask such questions as, who am I? Why have I come here? What will happen to me after death? This is called self-reflection. So again, why waste time on those kinds of activities that animals perform? Instead, one should strive for that which is not available in other life forms. In the second part of his text or instruction, Rishabh Dev says, one should engage in penance and austerity to attain the divine position of devotional service. This is the positive alternative. Austerities are unavoidable. In his purport, Prabhupada points out that people are nowadays educated and trained to work very hard for their sense gratification. And there's no sublime aim in their life. Then he says about how people have to travel to get to the workplace. What to speak of the austerities which you have to do when you do this heavy work. So uh, austerities should be directed instead to attain the divine position of devotional service. This point is also explained by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. He speaks there of three types of 
you could say um, intense activities or austerities that purify even the great souls who are already advanced. In the 18th chapter, text 5, he says, acts of sacrifice, of charity and of penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity and penance purify even the great souls. Let us look at some examples of sacrifice. There are the fire yagyas, the uh, sacrifices done by a qualified priest. But there is also the sacrifice of sitting together in an assembly and chanting the holy name together, the Sankatan Yakya. A good form of charity uh, would be to give donations to worthy uh, devotees, mm, to temples, uh, donations also for the maintenance of the worship on the altar, and penance would be to keep the four rules and regulations intact in our lives. Or also, mm, mm, you know, uh, rising early so that we can do our morning uh, spiritual activities. Such a good time in the morning, but our body may be tired if we have not gone properly to bed. So a good sacrifice is to change our schedule in a way uh, that makes mm, our living favorable for spiritual advancement. Another good example for uh, austerities could be austerities which you do in your spiritual practice, in your service, and in getting sadhu sangha or exalted and uplifting association. Mm, you might travel for long times to go there, you might reserve time mm, to just speak with devotees, and even you might have to practice some tolerance when you are together with devotees or sadhus who see things slightly different. In the last part of his instruction, Maharaj Rishabh Dev points out what we get by living such a life. He says, by such activity, one's heart is purified. And, one, and when one attains this position, a purified heart, he attains eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever. Let us pause for a while and recognize everything which we do can most probably be done by someone else. But your bhajan, your relationship to Krishna is entirely and exclusively in your hands alone. Speaking on this verse, I'm touched by the example of a widow who lived in the Radha Damuda temple in Vindavan at the same time where Srila Prabhupada lived there. This simple woman would go every morning down to the Yamuna at a very early time, take her bath and then come back with a lota or cup of Yamuna water, which she would put before the curtain of the altar. She would do this in the, at around 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30. Then uh, uh, she would do it in the winter, where it's really cold in Vindavan. And by the way, there's no protection from the cold. There are no heating systems. She would do it 
in wind and in storm and in uh, in all circumstances you can imagine even when she was ill because she considered this her worship of Yamuna and also her service to the deities Radha Damuda. So whenever she had put the cup with uh, Yamuna water before the curtain of the altar, mm, that some time later the pujari or priest would put his hand underneath the curtain and grasp a cup of Yamuna water and then use it for his worship, his bathing of the deities and other ceremonial activities. So one day the priest as always slipped his hand under the curtain to grab the lota cup of water but there was no cup of water. In the words of the priest who commented this later, he said, when this cup of water, which was the service this widow did for the Lord, was not there, I understood she had left her body and gone back to the eternal spiritual world. He knew this simple devotee was so determined to perform her service. She was ready to engage in the penance and austerity that it meant to go every morning and take her bath in the sometimes very cold Yamuna. And he trusted her so when the cup was not there, it could only mean one thing, and that is that this devotee had died. Later, uh, the priest informed others of the temple community, and they went to the little room of the elderly lady, and yes, there she was, lying in her bed. Should we better say, her body was there, a smile on her face, but she had gone to serve Radha Damoda in the eternal spiritual world. Let us pause again for a moment. Are not all her penances and austerities worth this one supreme reward? to purify the heart, to attain the divine position of devotion and service, and to attain an eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to the fleeting material happiness and continues forever. Let me leave you with a practical application of this text. Please think deeply what you could do in order to attain the divine position of devotional service. Is there something that you could give up? Is there somewhere a place where it's very good to step out of the comfort zone and engage more in spiritual activities like hearing about Krishna and his qualities and so on. What can you do to follow the example of the widow and uh, do what Maharaj Rishabdev instructs his sons to do? Thank you very much and I see you very soon in another Above the Cloud broadcast.